Welcome to Syntax. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Front End Happy Hour podcast. Welcome to this week's JS Party. Live from Shipshape Studios, this is Whiskey Web and Whatnot with your hosts, Robbie the Wagner and me, Charles William Carpenter III. That's right, Charles. We drink whiskey and talk about web development. I mean, it's all in the name. It's not that deep. This is Whiskey Web and Whatnot. Do not adjust your set. Whiskey Web and Whatnot is brought to you by Wix. We're big fans of Wix here on the show. We've had Yoev and Emmy on before on episode 98. If you're interested in more about Wix, definitely check that episode out. But I'm here today specifically to talk to you about the new Wix Studio. Digital marketers, this one's for you. I've got 30 seconds to tell you about Wix Studio, the web platform for agencies and enterprises. So here are a few things you can do in 30 seconds or less when you manage projects on Wix Studio. Work in sync with your team on one canvas. Reuse templates, widgets, and sections across sites. Create a client kit for seamless handovers and leverage best-in-class SEO defaults across all your Wix sites. Time's up, but the list keeps going. Step into Wix Studio to see more. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Whiskey Web and Whatnot with your hosts, Robbie the Wagner and Charles William Carpenter III. With that... No, I, oh, I, I don't something? get any time for comments. <laughs> uh, Charles William Carpenter III, who's announcing the NFL Super Game today. Oh, yes. Everyone and knows. You can see the, the video, game. you can see the headphones. Yeah, Super Game. You know, that big Monday night evening thing with a Super egg Game? Ball. What the hell is this? Sorry. <laughs> he's he's I don't just know. making it. He doesn't. <laughs> The joke is he doesn't know American football. Oh, oh, uh, oh, oh. okay. Gotcha. <laughs> I am from Sweden. What do you play? No. Okay. Please yeah. proceed. Our special guest today is the other mustache, Mr. Typecraft. Thanks for having What's me, guys. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> the running gag continues. For uh, our listener with who doesn't watch the video, Typecraft is showing his tiny can, <laughs> tiny hands. Not his tiny can. And that's only for his partner. I don't see the time can. Uh, yeah, do you want to let the folks at home know a bit about who you are and what you do? Yeah, my name's uh, Chris. Started a YouTube channel, called it Typecraft. Just been posting videos there and just hanging out, you know, making friends. Just chilling. Nice. So wait, I want to clarify here in the introductory portion. So you haven't, like, taken on an internet pseudonym, right? We yeah, you can call me Chris. Chris. I, I mean, it's, I don't know. I just, I feel like I don't have a strong opinion either way. But I feel like someone calling me Typecraft mm -hmm. once felt weird. And I was like, no, you can, yeah, I'm Chris. I'm yeah. still Chris. Yeah. Typecraft is yeah. the brand. Yeah, some, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, somebody was talking about That's that the on another podcast or somewhere. Or maybe it was in real life. I don't know. Someone was saying, like, it doesn't make a difference. Because if you're not big, then, like, who the fuck cares if people know what your real name is? But then also, mm -hmm. when you are big, people can easily still find out your real name. So who fucking cares? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. That's or true. you come on whiskey anyway, web and whatnot and what? get doxxed. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As, yeah, as exactly. has happened to other people, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I don't know what you mean, Michael Paulson, <laughs> yeah. but uh, I do know that Ken Wheeler gave his phone number out. That was his oh, real phone yeah. number, yeah. so which fun. many people tested out. Yeah, yeah it was. Awesome. It was pretty fun. I was like, I got to try this out. And he's like, yeah, bro, it's fucking me. <laughs> yeah, that's how I knew. Alrighty, we're gonna talk about whiskey. Yeah, tell first. us about the that's why the I'm Brookline. Brook, yeah, it's Brooklyn. the only thing I can pretend to do well. So today we're having the '77 Brooklyn Distilling Local, the local whiskey. It is a distilled from 90% rye, 10% corn. It is 90 proof. It says 742 days old, which is interesting. God. I guess that was its aging, which is a little like two year, two little over two years. That's weird. But it was the American Craft Spirits first place in 2020, Ooh, huh. which is, I don't know if they sponsored that majestic ruling or not. But uh, anyway, alas, here we go. Is are. that this specific one or this brand? The one I have, uh, I think it's this specific Like this expression. thing we're tasting is what everyone loves. Yes, this thing we're tasting. They do, they do have so more than one. When everyone was already one, drunk from the pandemic, Hell they yeah. thought this was really good. This is a pretty good one over here. 2020 before know. it ever even It was just the last uh, one they had. <laughs> 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 yeah, this was it. Cool. Well, I do appreciate that it is both distilled 
and bottled in Brookline, New York, not the other one in Maine or <laughs> elsewhere. So, you know, someone else trying to do the whole thing themselves instead of just sourcing from MGP. So. That's cool. It smells like if you get like a cast iron pan of cornbread, but it's got mm-hmm. like a sweet butter on it. You know what I mean? Like I do know exactly <laughs> what you mean, which is so hilarious that it's like very specific and was like, I was like, I don't know. You know, you know what I'm getting out of this? Thing, but like, like just off the top of my head, you know what it smells like to me? It's whiskey. What? Mostly. Mm. <laughs> I'm, getting a, I'm getting a strong yeah. whiskey oh. note. I uh, Very strong whiskey. Now that you I mention asked it. them to send you the mezcal. So <laughs> that was not okay. But yeah, definitely whiskey. I'm actually getting a little nuance. Of, now, this is weird. You know those, like, wa- we, and we've said this before, you know, like, the little, like, wax lip candy things. They were mm. mostly just, like, wax that you bought at the candy store, and you could, like, they were lips that you put over. Some of them, every once in a while, would have, like, a little cinnamon in there to make it a little. So it's, like, a little waxy cinnamon corn mix hmm. to me. That's what I'm smelling. Everybody yeah, definitely getting both of those things, like, the, like, cornish kind of smell, like the, like you said, cornbread and. I get that. That cinnamon. Yeah, I'm tasting a lot more cinnamon. Yeah. That's I'm priming the palate here. So I'm going to have to give it a second one. But yeah, it was a lot of like, what was that uh, cinnamon gum? Big red. Big red. Big red. Yeah, that's it. Not big red, the soda, but big red. And there was the a in third grade, I, a I had a bus driver that everyone called Big Red. And mm. I thought it was very rude, but I don't know if I understood nicknames back then, but. It always stuck out to me that I'll, that one will never leave my head. Big red. Hmm. Well, was he big? Let's start with that. I guess to kids, he was big. Kind of big. Yeah. He was big. He was very red. Okay. And then did he have like ginger hair or just like I think like the typical like or? kind of what I'm giving off right now, like your the Irish redness. You know, I think that was just mm-hmm. yeah, mm. yeah. Maybe it was a yeah. uh, self given name though. Like my dad knows yeah. a guy who tells people to refer to him as Wimpy. <laughs> that's like his nickname <laughs> like wait that sounds kind of disrespectful Isn't that the, from it's from popeye like the the is that burger like, guy like I'll, I'll gladly pay you on tuesday for a cheeseburger to is that like reverse psychology today? like you know how like you're a big dude people call people like say hey what's up tiny or whatever like you think he was saying call me wimpy because mm. i want everyone maybe to think that. i'm actually really strong maybe right right the, yeah the like throw people off <laughs> or it could be like that song that uh johnny cash song a boy named sue and sort of like I was given this name, Wimpy, and I stick with it because I'm a badass. Because I was made to be. Because my daddy left, but he left me with this name. <laughs> and it made me so mad. I don't know. It's another analogy. Anyway, back to this. I'm going to see if I get more in cinnamon. I don't know how to explain it. It's like, it's kind of harsh, but also not very harsh at the same time. Like, it's yeah, like yeah. spicy, but I'm not like recoiling when I drink it, you know? Yeah, yeah, like it's a it's real strong up front, and then it hangs out in your mm-hmm. tongue for a bit, and then the finish is a little bit weak. Actually, the finish is a little like dewy to yeah. me, and I'm getting that corn like towards hmm. the middle end, like kind of that corn bit. I still smell the corn very much, like the cornbread thing that yeah that uh, Robbie put in my it head. It feels very savory but, uh, to me too. Like, yeah, I can't put my finger on it, but it's like I'm eating dinner out of a cup. It's <laughs> a whole meal. And he starts with the cornbread yeah. and then he goes on to some big red at the end. I don't know. <laughs> what are you having in the middle, Robbie? Who knows? Suck a tash. Yeah. 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 More corn I guess in that. <laughs> More corn. Yeah. Well, I'll have some cornbread and then I got this corn suck a tash side for my Hell corn yeah. on the cob main. <laughs> in later in life, I do like some cornbread though. I can fuck with cornbread. But, like, I don't really like corn in general. Like, growing up, I mm, ate so much really? corn in all forms. Love corn and butter and great. Let's do corn on the cob. Like, all form cream corn. I liked all the corn. The problem is, is that I really am disturbed and just decided. Uh, I'm disturbed that it comes out the same way it goes in. Hell okay? yeah. This is, this is really the problem. <laughs> Yellow it's corn and the crop, like, if you will. This is what I had. Yeah. My body is like, I'm going to pass. I'm going to pass on that. Just yeah. come What's on the right back out. And that, there though? it is. Like maybe the fact I, that it holds up is actually good for your digestive system. It clears you out of it. I think you don't like, like digest like the it, most fibery, very fiber. well. Like my brother who's super into like fitness, he's like a CrossFit dude. He told me yeah. one time, he was like, yeah, corn, you just don't even digest. It's like not even real food. And like, so ever since I'll still eat mm. it, but now I'm like very judgmental of it. You know, it's on the plate. I'm like, I'll eat you. But I mean, yeah, I'm not doing much. <laughs> 
<laughs> you're not real. You're not real food. And it's like, yeah. watch me. I'm a I'm a real being. Yeah. <laughs> Come out the other side. Start again. Start anew. Outlive you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like what? It's like pigs eat it. Like we use it. It's so industrial. Yeah. It's like subsidized oh, yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Oh yeah. Corn and Turned soy. Turn into fuel and everything because you have to use it. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Corn fuel, I'm okay with. You know? Good for cars, not great I for humans. Know. Or, well, you know, whatever. <laughs> it's true of most things we eat I don't in know. America. I've got some combustion <laughs> happening in yeah. here from That'd time to time. That'd be actually kind of cool so. if, like, the corn fuel, you put it in your car and, like, it comes out as corn at the other end. So it's, like, similar to, like, <laughs> 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 like us digesting it. Like, that would be amazing. Corn, yuck. <laughs> but better for the environment. Oh, I don't know. Oh, God. <laughs> like, would, yeah. That did give great me a really funny visual. Whatever else. Like, <laughs> of cars like the tailpipe yeah, um, is it on the cob or is it like a splattering of course oh yeah it's like ready it's actually in a husk <laughs> it's just a splatter the whole plant just process like the high octane fuel like the whatever that is like it comes out a lot hotter and like it's like it sprays <laughs> yeah it's that pure ethanol or whatever oh yeah, my god like basically man. kind of a version of that I, this is I, high quality stuff now it's and it that <laughs> yeah, this yeah. actually makes sense, like, in a farm situation. But what is funny is I want to see, like, you know, some fancy new G-Wagon. And then it's, like, little <laughs> little corn husks popping out of <laughs> the bottom. Like the tiny little, like, Chinese food corns. Like, oh, oh yes. those are so yes. good. The canned are, ones. Like baby corns or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I will say I, I still eat those because those are adorable. Those are, they're fantastic and, uh, and stir like fries. I love them. It's a win-win for everybody, I think. Yeah. Before we get too far down this, we should probably rate this whiskey. What not? Yeah. You sure you want to get off corn? Are you ready yeah, to Yeah, we should rate now? the whiskey. I don't know if we're ready. Uh, we might, we might <laughs> well, circle back. Uh, this whiskey's made with corn, yeah. just so you know. 10% corn, which doesn't make it viable as bourbon. But let's see how it is. What, they just call it the local, which I appreciate. Mm-hmm. Who's going first? You have to explain the system. Or do you want me to explain the system? Oh, gosh, yes. That's right. Right, right. Well, since our one listener is on the show, this is probably a little <laughs> egregious. But so we have a highly... <laughs> We have a highly complex rating system from zero to eight tentacles because our octopi has been through some shit and had to buy, you know, had to grow mm-hmm. a ninth one. Zero being horrible, throw this away. Four being not bad, not great, but is all right. And then eight, clear the shelves. I would like all of the broken br- Brooklyn distilling mm-hmm. I can find. So I'll go first this time. I'm always like throwing Robbie under the bus bus on these things. I know. Yes. I'm feeling charitable today. It's uh, anyway. Yeah, it's interesting. So I'm going to categorize this in just American whiskeys. There's a little bit of corn in there, predominantly rye. But yeah, I can't say I would call this a rye. It has some of the spice, but like adding corn typically is not what a rye Mm. has anyway. It is interesting i think it's that i think i have some respect for their process i'd like to see one aged a little more i think it might get a little more robust in that sense i think it was like 50 bucks in the 50 dollar range give or take something like that so it's like it's okay but like not what the first thing you would pick probably not even in my top 10 that i would pick for this so i'm gonna give it four and a half so it has it's like it's not bad i can drink this i probably would try it in a couple of cocktails just to give like rye based cocktails a little mm-hmm. something different. I don't know. I tr- I try their stuff again. I think it's interesting. But four and a half for me. So yeah, I am a very basic bitch when it comes to whiskey. I know nothing. <laughs> and you know, at the bar, the you know, a shot would be like Tullamore Dew. Like that's what I know is like a fairly smooth, like kind of whiskey ish thing. Otherwise, outside of like bullet, I haven't had anything super exotic, but this is I mean, it's pretty good. It's a little bit, like I said, it's kind of spicy, a little Kind of grabs you a little bit, but not too bad. The corn is concerning because it's going to come out as corn, as we know. So that's not good. (laughs) But uh, yeah, I think I'd give it like a five. Like, I I like it. It's good. It's decent. Yeah, it's decent. That's not bad. You might pour another. (laughs) Yeah, I think it's pretty good. It's it's very confusing to me for being that high rye that it like doesn't have a lot of rye notes to me. That being said, if I'm not comparing it to other ryes, if we're doing just like American whiskey, I think it's actually pretty good. I like that it has the weird savory cornbread taste, like probably not what I'm going to reach for all the time, but I think that's interesting to share with people. And relatively low price, I'm going to give it a six, I think. Nice. Yeah. And the 45% alcohol, Four, five, is that six. high or low or like kind of right in the middle? Medium. Um, There's lower. 
Yeah, there's yeah. definitely lower. I would say it's like medium low. I yeah. don't know, low high. Towards I don't know. the it's end, like, low because this other one sitting right here is 131 proof. So it's not that. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> oh, super high. Yeah, yeah, I would say a 90 proof 90? is if you are going out and you're getting like a blended whiskey, as this definitely is, and many are. Or you know, you talk about your Tillamore Dew, or go get a uh, a Bullet, right? Yeah. You go get Bullet Bourbon. It's going to be like 90 proof. 45% just like this and that'll be like oh it's a little higher than like your bottom shelf for mm. roses or like Jack Daniels 80 proof probably 80 proof too, yeah. right? Jack Daniels I brother. think it is uh, yeah <laughs> 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 that's right fuck yeah so yeah this is like low compared to a lot of like I'm I'm trying to sip a neat whiskey this would be probably a little so you would go for a higher common proof if you want like the neat whiskey I like 100 plus yeah, I, w I like 100 plus. I want a little bit of what I call the hug, or mm -hmm. some people call the hug, which is like some of that the burn embrace. going down. You just kind of feel it. It's not like, oh, I can't swallow this. It's rough. But it's not, can't be harsh, but you want to yeah. kind of know what's there. But then, so like, is this yeah. is this kind of a harsh one for a 90 proof, or is this sort of not that bad and I just don't know what I'm talking about? There is a little weird harshness okay. somewhere in the middle that does hit you. Yeah. But yeah, it's... Yeah. It's not terrible. I think it's it's doable. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, that's that's kind of how I feel about it. I'm going to do a little bit more. Well, see, you were totally right. <laughs> should we move into some hot takes? We should. Let's go. And see what other things you can be totally right about. <laughs> yeah. Which is not much, according <laughs> to a lot of people on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. But, you know. It depends. just depends. It depends. You're a senior sure. engineer. Cool. Senior, senior engineer. <laughs> All right, well, I'll start it off, I guess, then. Okay. Robbie is slow. Do you use inferred types in TypeScript or explicit types? I'm more of an explicit guy. I like to know, like, what I'm looking at, and I like to, like, see the types and not sort of, like, have to dig anywhere to sort of get into, like, what I'm expecting in this code base. I actually also only had so much experience with TypeScript. I used it for, programmed with it professionally for, like, maybe, maybe, like, two years it was a React app that we moved to Next.js back when Next.js like became popular. And then, yeah, so I'm not like, I don't have like extremely strong opinions on like types and like the kinds of like type systems I enjoy or like whatever. I've only really used it for a little bit, but I like explicit types. And I was thinking about this earlier. Do you guys remember prop types in React at all? I like yeah. oh, yeah. prop types. I thought that was a nice little thing. I'm sure it wasn't very performant. It was probably... I don't know what, you know, maybe it was garbage, but for me, it was like, it was a nice little, like almost like a struct in a way that described the data going into your component. So you at least knew what you were expecting coming in. And like, that's kind of the sweet spot for me. I don't feel like I need like extremely fancy types, like, cause TypeScript can get a little bit crazy sometimes, but yeah, I think to answer the mm -hmm. question explicit. Yeah. The, the prop oh, types yeah. thing you could do with TypeScript. You could like get rid of all the things that ding you for having innies. And make everything else any, but then have the stuff you pass in be typed. <laughs> Done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the whole the whole system just same, has same. no idea what the hell's going on, but you can read the prop types. You're yeah. like, I know what it is. <laughs> I know yeah. what I'm supposed to I pass. <laughs> Tailwind or vanilla CSS? I think Tailwind for sure. Yeah. Tailwind's great for specifically like personal projects. It's awesome because you can get up and running really fast with something. And I feel like in professional environments, I don't I don't think I've used Tailwind like professionally, but I would assume maybe you guys can answer this too. I assume that a mature professional like team would take a Tailwind implementation and make it like something better so that you have like almost a, uh, like a component system, but it's built with Tailwind, you know? So like, yep. I like it per for personal projects is great, but like when we get some more like production ready stuff, you're not going to have like 200 line CSS things or classes in your elements, right? you'd probably have something like a, a component system or something that would predate a component system that like sort of abstracts some of that away. So yeah, I don't know. I like Tailwind. I'm a big fan. Yeah. yeah, that's how I always used to do it. I would have like the concept of a Tailwind component. Like it didn't necessarily match your exact JavaScript components, but yeah. it would like abstracted utility classes that throw 10 utility classes together. But then what we're trying to do at work, which we haven't even gotten Tailwind in yet, but like the whole goal is to have like your component library can use as many gross classes as mm -hmm. you want and like 90 percent of the devs should never see that because you're just going to use the component yeah last front end job we i had was we used styled components so we had like our own little mm -hmm. component architecture and then you would import that use it 
and then use styled components if you need something just a little bit more margin or like whatever. Yeah, it makes yeah. sense. Here's an important one. Get rebase or get merge. I like merge commits. I think it's a little bit easier to reason about merge commits, but they're squashed merge commits. Like you're not just merging in like fix a typo, fix a typo, make the test pass. You know, like you're actually like you squash it all. It's one like actual commit message that then gets merged and has a merge commit. Rebasing, I think, is great for like smaller projects. But once you get big enough, like I feel like it's just easier to have like the actual merge commit so you can revert things and like just sort of, I feel like you just kind of reason about it a little bit better if you're looking for bugs and things. Like I feel like a whole PR in that one merge commit like makes a lot more sense than like my PR was actually 20 commits that were all rebased onto main. So pick and choose. Yeah, I think that's a good point right there around if that could basically be your what am I trying to say? Like if you need to revert yeah. essentially, like that's your moment yeah. in time, that's your system of record around like, well, it worked before this one. So if you just roll back one commit. Yeah. And like typically I feel like I feel like you'd use your PR, your branch is like a feature. So like when you introduce a new feature, that's the thing that could possibly introduce a new bug. So having just that one commit tied to that one feature, you know, typically I think. I don't know, I just think it makes it easier. I'm getting so red, I feel like I might ex- like my face might explode. <laughs> <laughs> like it's we'll a little hot in here, but also later. like totally just, oh man, okay. get... the Kool Aid Man right now yeah. on the screen. I have to have a filter for that. <laughs> Put on the like yeah, Snapchat yeah. app thing, or I don't even know what the kids do these days. But yeah, those snap yeah. face whatever. <laughs> what the yeah. is Snapchat still? I yeah, think I, so. I think it's on the outs. I don't think as many people yeah. use it anymore. Yeah, I was sitting next to someone on the plane, I guess on the way to LA, and like she turned her phone out of airplane mode and was like, I have to respond to all this stuff before it disappears, which makes me think Snap is still a thing because yeah. I don't know of other apps that are mm. like that. Um, they have like taken that concept. Yeah. For the yeah. longest time, but I don't I have know. a brother in law who no. is he's 19 now, but I've known him since he was like three. And for the longest time when Snapchat was such a big thing, he would have these long streaks with people where like you snap back and forth like every day. And so like literally like so much of his day was spent just like taking a quick picture and sending it to someone as like just to keep the streak alive. Oh, I don't wow. see him do that anymore. So that seems know. like he's my barometer yeah, for like what's yeah. cool. So it's like what the kids think are cool these days. Oh, yeah. I see. <laughs> How's that working out for you? Oh, well, I'm not cool. So. Not working. <laughs> so not, you don't yeah, have used to working on that. I don't have a brother-in-law that start. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. A brother-in-law that you've known since he was three. Like, how old is your significant uh, other? She is. She's seventy-six years old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. She just got on Medicaid. Um, All right. She's doing great. You can tell I'm working on my PC vibe, where I just didn't immediately say yeah. wife. Oh, proud of you. No, good yeah. work. I know. And then it doesn't matter anymore. Once I start saying partner, then people are like, actually, we don't care. It's only fine. I say husband and wife now. I'm like, I just got, I just yeah, no, she's, got uh, it. She's my Damn wife, it. my beautiful wife. She's, so they have, uh, my wife's family basically had two families. They had four kids. No, they had three kids. And they had like a five-year kind of like hiatus, maybe cool off period. And mm-hmm. they had four more yeah. kids. Oh, so basically, have, it's yeah. Those it's aren't like accidents. Families. It's just you know your your typical like old school Irish Catholic family. But no, they're it's mm-hmm. uh, raw dog and that say? shit. That's <laughs> it, raw <laughs> dog. And, yeah, I'll take yeah. the blame. For God that, decides right? how many kids you have. I said raw dog. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, I did not derail. You're right. Yeah, no, they're raw dogging yeah. it, and uh, came out with seven kids. <laughs> and no, they the the seven kids they span twenty one years. So my wife was. On her way, actually, yeah, this is her story. She was on her way to a Dave Matthews concert when her mom gave birth to her little brother. She was uh, 16, which is wild. Well, I Did they name him that. Dave or Matthew? Oh, they should have now. His name's Keen. <laughs> that would have been amazing. Yep. Oh. Keen? That's well, actually that's pretty awesome dope name. name. No wonder he's cool and you're not. Our yeah. daughter is yeah, named I agree. Keen. Charlotte Keen Power. So, yeah. Hmm. We did, the, what, did you ever wait, play, How old uh, is your daughter? My daughter is five. My son is just, also five. We have twins, boy, girl. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you heard, you obviously, five years ago, you heard about what I was naming my daughter and you immediately. I did. Yeah. That, no, so. it's true. I was, yep. just, I was waiting in the wait. Mm-hmm. Yep. You were like, I love Charles and how can I honor him? Not by <laughs> yeah. the boy. Well, it's just, you know, you know, you have some feminine qualities. So I think, you know, the. <laughs> 
Name of the girl. Off the it's just the face cream <laughs> he right. uses. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the lighting, actually. Finish these hot takes. Yeah. What about let or const? Whatever. I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> or var, I guess, if you want. I use var. That's the only I right use answer, var. actually. That's it. Only var. Yeah. Just out of spite. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, yeah. I know there's some. <laughs> that's, no, that's why yeah, now know we know why you some weird like stuff lens. around it. I'm sure const. I'm going to talk out of my ass for a second here, but like if I were to guess, I'm sure there's <laughs> something about like maybe like garbage collection or memory where like cons could be a little bit more performant than let's maybe, I don't know, but I don't really mm. care if it's going to change, use let, if it's not yeah. going to change, use cons. If you used cons and that's going to change, you change that to let and I don't know. <laughs> See, I only know like from var to those two, the yes. hoisting, obviously right. that's different. So lexical scope yeah. becomes a thing. And then the, I thought the rest was really just more of a declaration of intent and not necessarily. So it's yeah. more like readability versus. Well, I did say I was going to talk on my ass. So. Yeah. I don't think it actually enforces much. Really? You think it mm -hmm. would be very constant, but it's like not any different than a var. It just like yells at you if you try to assign it again. Here I am thinking yeah. JavaScript was more clever than it actually is. <laughs> mm -mm. Yeah. It's a wild west yeah. still. Come on. Yeah. It's all going. It's all burning down. What do you think about nested ternaries? I don't like them. I think you could just do, you can make that look a lot better. If someone comes by, like someone new to the team, looks at the code, and it's just like nested ternaries, and they're not going to know what the hell's going on. So I feel like ifs and else's are better than ternaries in general. Ternaries are cool. Like they look very clever. They look like sexy, you know, but I feel like I'm more old school there. I don't really love ternaries in general. What about you guys? Yeah, same. If it's like longer than one line yeah. at all. I don't want it to be a ternary because then I'm like, I already can't follow this. Just give me some blocks of if else. Like, the ternary it's itself, like you read it and then you have to like double back on yourself to be like, okay, so that you do this. Cause like the a ternary is a funny thing because you set a variable, right? Const or let to a thing. And then you see a question mark there. And then you have to like sort of look at it. It's kind of, there's this, just that little hint of like extra cognitive overhead with ternaries. Whereas if you say, if mm -hmm. this, and you're like, oh, I know what I'm getting into. Yeah, for sure. Totally agree. I liked them early in my career in that, like, I was afraid <laughs> of them. And you would see code written by older, you know, mm -hmm. more experienced peers. And I would be like, oh, okay. Well, this is this is the super smart way and efficient way and to do it. And you just realize, like, there's full of shit. Yeah, right. Like, it, yeah. but not for a while because you're just like, oh, challenge. First, let me understand this. Now, how do I do this in my code to make it a little more clever? Right. It's that yeah. whole arc of like, yeah, keep meme. it simple, stupid. And then it's like, look how fucking good <laughs> yeah. I am. And then you're like, <laughs> yep. Can I just make, make sure like in a month I can read yeah. this again? Yeah. Great. When you say ternaries, I always think of this other one too because it was like an ES6 thing, I think. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to call it the right thing, but like the splatter assignments, like, you do a open squiggly brace mm, spread, spread operator. operator. That's it. Yeah. The spread operator. That's another one. That's like, if yeah. you want to do something fancy, you can do like a spread operator and set mm -hmm. variables to things, but that gets crazy too. I've been in code bases where mm -hmm. the spread operator gets used in a very nested way. And so like, like three levels mm -hmm. in, you have this variable that's set to like some object that you don't exactly know exactly what it is, but like maybe the spread operator gives you a little bit of a hint, but it's just that's that's always been a mess to me, too. I don't know how you guys feel about that. It looks cool. TypeScript doesn't even let you do it, really. Oh, really? Like, you try to do it in TypeScript, and it's like, I don't know every single bit of detail about this thing you're spreading, so no, please do it out explicitly. Yeah. yeah. That's that's what unknown is for. Well, like, yeah, you can know. do You that. don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> but yeah, that's all I can say. But we're cool. It's well, that's when you get that whole, like, record string unknown thing, and, like, it's because... You essentially are like, I'm assigning this mm -hmm. one, assigning this one, and then everything else is called this. The rest of the shit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Spread operator. I don't know. Well, the important question is, as a developer, mm -hmm. can I get a Lambo faster learning PHP or Rails? Spritz. Did you mean Laravel or did you mean PHP? Ooh. PHP. Well, okay. I guess okay. there's one's a framework and one's, or I guess yeah. semantics, but I know what you mean. Yeah, Ruby. So we well, yeah, Ruby on Rails, okay, right? So like Rails sure. is the framework. That's a good sure, question. We can specify. I think it depends. Actually, if I uh, let me answer this question seriously, it kind of depends on your business savvy, probably, right? Like if you learn PHP, then you can learn like all the WordPress stuff. You could like get into like WordPress development. 
They could grow like an empire of like WordPress websites maybe that you're like hosting for people and then maybe get Lambo out of that. I don't know. Rails is more of like a, I don't know, just you just have a job in Rails. But if you invented Rails, you get a Lambo. Yeah. You, you get multiple, multiple yeah. McLarens mm -hmm. if you invented. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then if you create a framework for Laravel, you get a Lambo. Oh, the guy who created the but, Laravel framework has a Lambo? Yeah, he has a Lambo. Yeah, yeah. he's also a car guy. Yeah, he's, he's the one that kind of started this Lambo thing. Oh, hell thing. yeah. I didn't know I that. Believe. At least from I what I saw. DHH. That's why everyone's like, no, he's, he's got the yeah. race cars. But uh, well, I guess he has had Lambos, but like he's less specific about it being a Lambo. And the whole PHP joke is like, you get a Lambo yeah. if you're a PHP mm -hmm. developer. DHH has basically like said my entire career trajectory has like fueled this incredibly, I don't know if I want to say lavish, but it is like every picture he shows is very nice. The cars no, are nice. No, you mean his humble home? Nice. His like, humble home overlooking the ocean? Yeah, yeah. Homes. Which one? Yeah. yeah, homes. Depending on which home right. he's in. But uh, there's a primary residence yeah. and other ones. I don't see how people can hate on that. I feel like it's more inspirational than anything else, you know? Like some people, I don't know, I always, yeah. I kind of get swept up with like the more motivational type people who are like, look what you can achieve. Like, look what I've got. I'm like, hell yeah, I want that too. Like, that's cool. Yeah, some people hate that. I don't know why. I think it's kind of cool. I mean, maybe it depends on how you take yeah. it, right? Like if you're like, oh, maybe someday yeah. I, could I could be there. Or like if you're in a, in your life, you're just like, I'm not there now. I don't think I'm ever going to be there. So fuck you, pal. Who cares about your Lambos? Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I know. I think it depends you be on at peace with where you are. the extent of your wealth to me. If you've got like $50 million or less, then I respect your hustle. If you you have like $500 billion, please give some of that to everyone else. What the fuck are you doing with that much money? Um, right. like, Hard to agree. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. 100%. For sure. Yeah, because at a certain point, it's just like you've already got generational wealth yeah, for yeah. the most part. So like, you don't e need to own a nation. Like, <laughs> basically, if you have the ability to like buy entire, have more than the GDP of entire companies. This just in: Whiskey Fund is now open for all your merch needs. That's right, Robbie. We're hearing reports of hats, sweaters, and T-shirts, as well as a link to join our Discord server. What's a Discord server? <sighs> Just read the prompter, man. Hit subscribe, leave us a review on your favorite podcast app, and tell your friends about our broadcast. It really does help us reach more people and keeps the show growing. All right, back to your regularly scheduled programming. By the way, quick side note, I'm adding a couple of drops of water to see if that changes. Wow, literal, literal drops. Yeah, literal drops. Two, three drops, max. Four is too many. Uh, oxidizing does that change in it there. for you? It absolutely does. Yeah. hundred percent will. Taylor Poindexter gave us the signs. Yeah, I've known this for years, but Taylor Poindexter, she she's a very smart lady across mm. the board and her whiskey knowledge is also incredible. And so she gave us like all the scientific reason why that changes it. It's just something I'd always been told, felt, known like to myself. She's like, No, that's a thing. Yeah. Let oh, me, that's so here's cool. the science. I wouldn't have thought of that. I that was really cool. Yeah. That's the one episode you didn't listen to, I guess. Do you guys <laughs> see that I've <laughs> listened to the episodes? Yeah, we actually turned no, off no analytics idea. for everyone except for you, and we just see what you listen to. <laughs> <laughs> we see when you and you, you yeah, listen. Listening. I have a no, special work on a new no. episode. Drops. I mean, yeah. that would be some incredibly invasive analytics, I think. Like, it definitely gives us things around, like, location. If it's through Spotify, they, they'll tell you things like male, female, mm -hmm. that yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, location, um, what you listen to it on. A lot of that is like, it's all just IP based. So it also is like weird. Like the whole counting listens thing is a hard problem. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah, it's always like a wild guess. Oh, wow. Okay. Water makes it, brings up the spice a couple of notes on the sides of my tongue and then makes the finish though. It kind of turns it into a little bit of a cola finish. That's the high fructose corn syrup kind of like conversion finish. Yeah. So does it take away the spiciness that hits you? No, it definitely, it, it makes oh. it quicker though. So it was mm. like real quick to hit the sides of my tongue with some of that spice and then it kind of dissipates and it was less cinnamony though, a little more like mm. nutmeggy. Something else I think you would probably need to water down for me to enjoy. Let's talk about NeoVim a little bit. <laughs> um. <laughs> what a segue, um, hell of a segue. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, we do what we yeah, can. so I, you know, I'm always super impressed with Vim in general because it tends to be there's not someone who's like a novice at it, or if they are, I guess they're not like look at me use it. Yeah, 
because yep. like yeah look at me suck yeah at this. it's always like let me edit 500 things at once and like do crazy insane stuff and like i respect the game yep. i guess my question is kind of where do you get started is there a way that it's like you should put it in your vs code like i know that's a thing or should you do it standalone or like what's the like easy mode for trying it a little bit and then like how do you learn because for me every time i try to use something with like that's all keyboard based. Mm -hmm. It's like, I need to get work done. So I stop trying to learn it. Yeah. Well, to start with you, less stressful job. No, <laughs> but no, that's a good question. I mean, that's a hard one for me to answer because so I graduated college. The degree was computer engineering, right? Like I didn't know anything about what I wanted to do. It was like a little bit of hardware, a little bit of software, whatever. I actually hated software engineering. I, I didn't think it was something I wanted to do. I worked at a couple jobs, kind of hated my life found my way into a pseudo programming job. It was my first programming job was as a build and release engineer, which, huh, okay. so it was a company that did like appliance, like power measurement stuff. I don't know, it was this big Java app or whatever. And what a build and release engineer does is kind of help developers sort of merge their code into main or trunk. This was subversion. So it was like merge your code into trunk Ooh, yeah, and like sort of build some yep. tools around that or, whatever. So my boss at the time used Vim and taught me Vim. And I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Ever since then, I've kind of, I've kind of flirted with other things like VS Code never really gripped me. Adam never got me. TechSmeet did for a little bit because of Ruby on Rails, DHH. That was my trajectory into programming was Ruby on Rails. But I always kind of came back to Vim and I never could leave it. So to answer the question, to, to make it easier to learn it, I would say the VS Code thing, like if you're using VS Code or JetBrains IDE, like whatever it is, turn on that Vim mode for like a little bit every single day and just try and learn a little bit more. And then when you get stuck on something, don't feel like you have to like brute force your way through it. Like maybe think about it, look it up, take it off of Vim mode or whatever, right? Like get your work done and then just look it up later and then try it out. And then like eventually you'll just kind of build up the tool set Whereas like where, where it feels like you're just kind of flying through a code base and it's awesome. And does anyone have like a gamified version of learning it? Like, I feel like that should be a thing. You like open a website and it's just Vim, but it's like, you know, if you can do these five things successfully, you get a hundred points and yeah. like, here's your level in Vim and whatever. Like, I think that should be a thing. Does anything like that exist? I'm sure there is. I wouldn't know. Like I said, I mean, I learned mm. it so long ago. It's like just kind of a thing that's been muscle memory for like 10 years. So I wouldn't know. Everyone always says to type colon help in Vim, which I feel like is like a snarky way of saying like RTFM. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it's yeah. like how does this work? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Have you looked at the man yeah, pages? That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> how does this work? You tried man. It's, that's kind of, but everyone says yeah. the help thing is good. I've never really done it. I think there's like Vim ping pong. I don't know. I couldn't, I couldn't really say. It's never mm. been a thing to me. Are there any videos on YouTube that I don't think so. watched? No, I don't think so. No. <laughs> no, no, I don't think so either. Oh, yeah. look at that okay. French bulldog. I don't think so. Either. That's like <laughs> that's cute. He's being needy. Mm, yeah, <laughs> they're they're yeah. monsters. I don't trust them. So, thank you for you know trying to slowly get me to realize you're trying to get me to talk about my YouTube channel. But <laughs> <laughs> do you have one of those? Oh uh, yeah, I might have started one. Yeah. I started one a little bit ago. So the YouTube stuff I did on Vim, I don't think is very good for like beginners to Vim. It's good if you like know a little bit about Vim and you want to enhance it or you want to, you've kind of played around with some like Vim, like sort of distributions a little bit and you want to know what goes into like the plugins you're using and all that stuff. So I, I did a whole course. It's Neo Vim for noobs, probably not very well named, but it's, that's the course for like, if you want to learn how to set up your plugins in just the right way with like the modern tooling that exists out there with Neo Vim, then yeah, that's, that's something you can look into. I think a good sort of addendum to that too is, and something you helped nudge me into, but DHH initially yeah. kind of put out there and finally got me to, you know, I've flirted with Linux on and off a few different times, like Linux, uh, Linux is put it flirt. on, uh, put suit. Such a tease. <laughs> yeah, it kind of is. It's like I went through, you know, on Pies, you go through a few different versions, trying things out, doing some testing stuff, whatever. Yeah. Uh, and it's easy to just like throw that to the side. Oh, do I want to really want to try this, get an old laptop and put Ubuntu on there and start to play with it a little bit. But then kind of like many of these things, it's like, oh, I have to get shit done. And this is an old shitty laptop. So I'm going to go back to my Mac that is <laughs> nice and shiny and I'm faster with. But uh, one thing that really got me interested 
So first of all, what I'm talking yes. about is Omakube, which is like basically a out of the box install everything you need as a developer and make it really pretty on a laptop. On Ubuntu, he yep. suggests a couple of specific. Yeah, yeah. So it has Ubuntu and it has like all these settings and apps that you need to just dev. NeoVim's yep. on there, of course, and uh, VS Code is on there. A nice terminal app, like all kinds of things, and you just run a command and let the magic happen tell it a couple of things. You did a video on setting that up, which was really nice because like I got a framework computer mm-hmm. at a good price. Didn't quite get the one that you know he mentions, but he's running his Apple XDR yeah. monitor with this too, which I thought mm. was like you know what's very funny cool. is it shows so in Omakube like, as well. Like the first time you open the terminal, the font is so small. And the, it's <laughs> yeah. like this big. Like, come yeah, on. I was yeah, like, I'm surprised you even got past that. For me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I was able to edit that and make mm-hmm. it old man size. Robbie, if you were concerned, like people make fun of me and like eighteen. You yeah, know, you use forty-eight uh, yeah, point font, font for your yeah yeah, yeah absolutely. There, I start default. at fourteen. <laughs> Fourteen's the baseline. I only go up from there. Yeah, for sure. So there was all of that, and then I was like, okay, now what? I don't know, and kind of put it down, and then you put out a video just talking about that, Hell like yeah. how it's a nice developer setup. So I mean, I think like, do you think that Linux perhaps is the best OS for developers? It depends on how you look at like what you want your OS to do and like what you're using it for. And like, just sort of like what your kind of philosophy is. And again, it kind of comes back to like, just me when I was a lot younger, for some reason, I don't even know why this is the case, but I loved like messing around with Linux kind of like as a kid, like in high school, I would build like gaming computers and you know, I'd like to just play like games on them or whatever. But like deep down, I was like, I wonder what this like Linux thing is. So I'd install like Ubuntu on like this gaming PC and like just CD around some directories, copy paste some stuff into the terminal and be like, okay, that's cool, I guess. And I try and like game on it. And it was horrible, but you know, whatever. But I was always kind of interested yeah. in that. So for me, I always kind of had this sort of like a, a piece of my heart that, that always like kind of belonged to Linux in a way, you know, like it was always just kind of a thing in my head. So for me, I think Linux is great for development because I said this on a video, but the package management systems in all the Linux distros are you know, they're first class citizens, right? Like that's a major feature of a Linux distribution is the package manager. You know, like Arch has Arch has Pac-Man, Ubuntu, and Debian have apt. Someone has Yum. I forget which one, Fedora or Red Hat has Fedora. Yum. Yeah, Fedora yeah. has Yum. Yep. And so that's like a major thing in the Linux distribution itself. Whereas in Mac OS, you have to like go out of your way to install Homebrew. And Homebrew is like good, but it's not the same thing. So I think like the the story of like installing packages on your computer, installing your development environment, everything you need is just like more straightforward in Linux because like that's like the main reason to use Linux is like for programming and for like, you know, a million other things. But like programming is a first class citizen on Linux. Whereas Mac OS, I mean, does it still ship with like Ruby 2.7 or something? I think it does. Probably. Like the, the Ruby that comes with Mac OS. But you need is, RVM oh. everywhere anyway. No. Yeah. Mm-mm. ASDF. <laughs> Okay, yes. Or or similar. ASDF is what I use for PMPM and uh Node oh, nice. personally, yeah, yeah, yeah. but mm. I think it only recently started shipping with Python 3. Yeah. Like for the longest time it was like Python 2. Yeah, and whatever. that's you know, that's that's and, part uh, of the thing is like, you know, Apple or Mac as an OS doesn't really have programming as like the first class citizen unless maybe you're doing iOS development then maybe, but even then like you still have yeah. to download you still have to download Xcode tools, right? And Xcode itself Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and you always have to update update Xcode. Yes. I swear, all the time. Anytime like, you do anything, it's like, have you installed the command line tools? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I did yesterday. Actually, I'm pretty sure I did. <laughs> well, just make sure you open yeah. it and click. I think the like ten percent of Stack Overflow like, yeah, answers are like dash dash Xcode install or whatever. But yeah, so the the package manager is Definitely. like first and foremost first class citizen, but also like it's super customizable. You know, like you can have a tiling window manager like i3 or Hyperland, which is like the new hotness, which I mean, it is great. You can do whatever you want with like the desktop environment, like just your programming experience in general. You can do whatever you want. And it also just kind of makes sense because as a web developer, you're deploying. I wouldn't know what the percentage is, but like a very high percentage of what you're deploying to is a Linux environment. So it's kind of an interesting story. It's got to be like 90%. Yeah, it's got to be at least 90 to me, it just kind of makes sense. There's like this like circle that gets completed in my brain of like, I'm developing on Linux and deploying to Linux. Mm, yeah. There's no, it works on my machine. It, it just works yeah, on everywhere. Yeah. 
<laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, no, that's yeah, fair. A bunch of reasons. I'm sure there's edge cases there, but that does make a ton more sense of like I'm closer to the metal I, yeah. I'm putting my But then like onto. Yeah. then there's this existential crisis that even I have where like I wanted a live stream on my the framework laptop, right? That I have Linux installed on. Yeah. And it works, but like you don't really have drivers for like a stream deck. You don't have drivers for certain things. I bought a Windows yeah. PC just to do the just to do the streaming stuff, like a capture card in the PC and whatever. Everything just works out of the box. Yeah. So there's there's some stories where Linux works great and some stories where it doesn't work great. And that's why like the yeah. whole Linux as a desktop environment, or like this is the year of Linux as a desktop environment is kind of like, well, it depends on for who, right? Like the end user, not really. Yeah. But yeah. for developers, yeah. I mean, yeah. it works great. I think for developing, if you're in at least something Unix-based, it's like you're good. There's no way yeah. I would ever write code in Windows. You can never force me. Even if I work for Microsoft, you still can't force me. Like, <laughs> uh, maybe you could. I don't know. I haven't worked for Microsoft, but I'm sure there's a big enough check. The fact that Come they on. let you install the Linux subsystem on Windows now is like just a total, you know, they've given up. They're like, yes, you can use yeah. Linux. That's yeah. a funny point yeah. of contention amongst a lot of different people. A lot of people, like, I'll make a YouTube video on like some cool Linux command that I just like kind of learned or like that I remembered or whatever. And so many people are like, yeah, but you could do that Windows. You install WSL, you get, you know, so many people like have that as like a, a point of contention. It's like, but it's, it's still Linux. Like it's, it's yeah. yeah, it's a funny thing. Yeah. Yeah. You can do everything anywhere given enough time to figure out how to do sure. it. Sure. <laughs> That's so true. Just because you can doesn't mean you <laughs> yeah. should. Just to wrap up the, the Linux stuff here. I'm curious about Arch and like, cause I haven't installed it since, let me think. 2011 mm -hmm. or something and then i was like i know next to nothing about this someone in some random forum said you should try it so i did and it was like it took me like a week to get it running because <laughs> it's like even once you do it's like oh you actually want like a gui you gotta yep. install that bro yep. <laughs> like, <laughs> and right. like, yeah so yeah I'm, I'm curious how like that is today or like people have said the flow has gotten easier no the the arch install is a lot easier i hadn't installed it like in the last 10 years or so either until like recently but in the past i think like three years or so there's that the arch install script which is something you can launch from like when you first land into like the arch like terminal when you load it from like a bootable iso image right and so the arch install script is like it's not really like a gui it's more like I don't know, it's like a pre-GUI kind of thing. Like you can just like go up and down with the arrow sure. keys and select certain things, but like it gives you enough and it's easy enough that anyone can definitely install Arch now. It wasn't the case before and it always put me off on Arch like a long time ago. Like yeah. I'd be like, yeah, I could install Arch. And like the story behind like, you know, Pac-Man and constantly updating your packages and like the Arch user repository, the AUR being like so full of like so much good stuff. And like, it, that seems interesting, but... I don't want to mount my file systems. I don't want to like partition stuff myself. Like, can you just tell me yeah. like how you'd prefer to do it? And I'll say, yes, you know, like, and so that's what they do now. That's, that's <laughs> right. the Arch yeah. install script. It's a lot easier, way more straightforward. Nice. Yeah. Hmm. Might have to try it again. Yeah. Inclusive. And I covered that in video <laughs> on YouTube. What do you oh, know? Well, there you go. Well, well Robbie's going to watch them all this weekend. It'll be fine. Your user I, account. I barely watch, watch YouTube, account. to be honest. Like, I feel like I'm the only millennial that, like, never participates in social media pretty much at yeah. all. But, uh, whatever. No. I watch food <laughs> shows. Oh, me too. Oh, I'm I watch huge into food. Hot, Hot ones. ones. Uh, the, the burger show was a big one for me. Somebody told me about pasta Ooh, grannies. I haven't heard that one. Recently, Wait, which is like sounds this British lady. I know it sounds, <laughs> it sounds funnier than it really oh. is. And it's like this British lady, I think, who like goes around to all, all these like towns in Italy and finds this like 90 year old grandma and she'll like, this is our family recipe for generations. Oh, this is how awesome. you do ravioli, you know, whatever. That yeah, it is awesome. amazing. So that's like a good, it's stuff like that. There's a pizza guy that I have. I can't remember his name offhand, but like he's, you know, pizzolo and he's, but he lives in the States and he's like giving all these tips and whatever yeah. else about like how to make it the best you can in the States. You don't need a fancy pizza oven. I mean, it'd be you great. Don't. And this is what you get. <laughs> but if this is what you have, yeah, I was able to make a really good one in the normal oven with a pizza stone at 550. Oh, that's good. And mm. I was actually pretty impressed. That's really good. Yeah. Because yeah. I do have like an uni, mm -hmm. like portable, 
And that usually I put up around seven to seven fifty. You gotta you know, have in that range. Man. Seven plus. I, seven, that's not my zone. So the but, one that we have one and it's it's like a Cuisinart or like not expensive, but it's a you know, specialized for pizza. Yep. But it only gets yep. to like six or seven hundred and it like it takes too long. It's in there too long. It Is gets too Cooked like on top. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I want it to be like I, really gooey and wet on top mm. and barely cooked but like done in like one or two minutes at like 900 plus yeah no, the like the are yeah. yeah i was gonna say like with the yeah. fire and the uni i, no, I get it done in YouTube, about a minute and a half food stuff is like a problem for me it's like yes. actually a serious problem in my life <laughs> i watch a lot of food stuff on youtube j kenji lopez or lopez alt that guy's awesome i watch mm-hmm. uh, a lot of the munchie stuff is really good like some first of feast is oh like yeah, a munchies yeah. Thing. maddie matheson is a funny like he's so entertaining yep. Yeah, um, always good. Yeah, it's fun. I, I the food stuff I I'm into a lot. I watch too much of it. Like you suck at cooking, binging with Babish. That was a good one. Oh yes, yes, Andrew yes. Ray. So that's the burger show where like they do the East West Coast burger thing, and then they do like the Frankenstein version cooking with Babish. Yeah, there's the Josh, Josh Wiseman. whatever. Oh, what's his name? <laughs> yes, his is also very good. <laughs> I, I mean, you. come on. I'm big into the food stuff on YouTube. It. And it's funny. Like I wasn't as bad on YouTube kind of talking like what Robbie was saying, like I wasn't a big social media, you know, consumer at all before I started a YouTube channel. But now like I'll hop into YouTube and be like, oh, maybe I'll do a little research or something. You know? <laughs> like, oh, wow, that's an interesting yeah. Yeah. thing. Ooh, uh, Josh Weisman just posted yeah, a new video. It's Let true, check though. That out. I definitely listen and watch non-tech yeah. things for inspiration. Yeah. 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 100%. I do fall down the rabbit hole like for maybe an hour sometimes, yeah. but like it's not very often. But yeah, it is. I go to upload a video and I'm like, hey, look at all these other videos. These would be mm-hmm. fun to watch. I know. I'm the same. Boat. Yeah. I got to say it's Twitch that I Dude, don't Twitch understand. Is, I Twitch try is to wild. like. Yeah. yeah. Totally just, different. Have yeah. you guys tried the live stream on Twitch? Not, not yet. We, we should have streamed this right it. now. Yeah. But. Hell yeah. There's something about Twitch. It's very like in your face. Like there's so much going on mm-hmm. with Twitch because it's like yeah. the same thing with Discord. Twitch and Discord, they're both like very in your face. Yeah. There's so many options. Well, there's so many things you can do with it that like you yeah. almost don't know where to start. Yeah. Like you get analysis paralysis. But I started to understand why Twitch is fun because I started doing like live streams and stuff. Typecraft on Twitch, by the way. But uh no, I started, <laughs> <laughs> I started doing um live streams and stuff and you know, I do a few here and there, and like it's fun. You interact with some people who are chatting or whatever, and then you like get raided by someone. And I had no idea what that was. Adam Dot Dev and Dax, those two, like they finished their oh, thing nice. and they raided me. I was like, oh, whoa, that's cool. Like, what's this? And then they like chatted and chat for a little bit. They're like, oh, I watch YouTube videos. I'm like, you watch my YouTube? Mm-hmm. You watch my YouTube stuff? So how does raiding? <laughs> like, how do you get everyone to like join? Like, how does that work? I I like, don't know how. It if everyone's in your yeah. thing, can you be like? All of those people go to your I think thing? if you're a moderator or whatever, you can be like, I'm going to jump to this channel. Let's raid. And it's basically so everybody else. Oh, it's like a yeah, built-in do thing? Doing the stream. I if think you're the one streaming, thing. what you do is like there's a button yeah. somewhere or you can type slash raid in chat. And like then you can pick the user you want to raid. Mm. And so I raided like, I don't know anyone on Twitch. So like I raided like the Primogen <laughs> after one of my things. Yeah. He's like but then he tri-bro. actually raided. <laughs> no, he raided me after Adam and Dax did. Yeah, he's cool like that. Everyone was just spamming chat, being like, oh, Neo Vim sucks. I was like, what the hell's? Because if you don't know what you're doing, like, the first thing you think is, like, I got hacked. Like, something happened. Like, what's wrong with the chat? Like, I, yeah. oh, oh my God. Like, yeah. I, I, I got to fix oh, this. <laughs> you know, like, I got to ban people or something. Yeah. And then you realize, like, oh, someone raided you. That's fun. So, yeah, yeah. Twitch is yeah. like, there's, there's so much stuff going on, but it's, it's fun. And I, I understood how it's fun after being raided and doing raids, too. It's, it's fun to do. Not that that's the that only thing sense. you can do yeah. on Twitch, but. I don't know anything else <laughs> yet. <laughs> yeah. We'll try it one day. We got to keep Amazon afloat. They're doing bad with money Yeah, they need help. So. Jeff Bezos, he yeah. needs help. Yeah. I don't really going to help Will Jeff get another yacht. He's well, yacht is small. Yeah, it's a little gauche, too. I mean, it's not that nice. We got to help him out a little bit, I think. It needs to be big enough that every bridge in the world must be raised for him. It just join. knocked over. <laughs> or he it's, it's like in a way and it has like a ram at the top oh, and he could just go just through like it Baltimore, and continue on. Just yes. Done. Bridge yeah. gone. Plows, but continue on. Through it, be able to right? just continue and then he has on. an assistant that like while he's yeah. going through the bridge is throwing money off the back so that like you know like oh this will pay for it. You mm. Know. Mm. Or gold bars. No, like, that, you want he, it to he sink diver- he divorced so you have to dive her. for no, it. Yeah. yeah I was going to say he divorced the one that gives away the money. Yeah. 
She's been doing great stuff. Mm. Yeah. yeah, for sure. That's like a whole other episode <laughs> I'm talking about. I want to. I want before we whatever cut over into uh, wrapping up. I want to make sure that we ask you some of our talking points that are non tech. You know, we've had tons of whatnot throughout. Mm-hmm. But if you weren't in tech, what career would you choose? Oh, I don't know. That's a tough one. Doesn't have to be a skill you have. Yeah, you, if like, you could no acquire a skill, no limit records, bro. I'd be a YouTube yes. watcher guy. That's what I would do. No, um, hmm. I don't know. Maybe like a cook, like a chef. You know, something that's like kind of mm. uh, maybe it's a yeah. little artistic, a little bit like, you know, you can put like your own sort of flair on it, like kind of like writing code, I guess. But, you know, then like, I don't know, maybe I'll open a, mm. open a restaurant. I love business. I think that'd be interesting. Maybe a chef. The molecular gastronomy? No. Oh, my God. No. Mm. <laughs> that no. stuff's crazy where you like break it down and reassemble it. And then it looks like one thing and yeah. has different flavors. Yeah. I've been to some restaurants. Have like you? That Is it cool? Shit. I've never Bonkers. been to a... It is so cool. I went to the bazaar in LA, like Jose Andreas's mm-hmm. bazaar, and it had like cotton candy that tastes like sushi, you know, shit oh, like God. that. It was like crazy. Oh, cool. <laughs> that and, is very cool. And there was a, it was super cool. And we did one in DC too, and I can't remember the name though of whatever, but there was another one of those mm-hmm. where it's like looks DC one way and tastes city. another. Have you guys been to any conferences lately? Yes, mm-hmm. lots of them. I got to start going yeah. to conferences. I get so jealous. Emberfest yeah. in Ireland. Uh, I mean, like, you know, a real conference. <laughs> well, you get to yeah. go to Ireland. <laughs> Dude, Ireland is awesome. <laughs> right. I love right. Ireland. Yeah. It's so great. Yeah. Galway. Yeah. It's oh, like awesome. Yeah. We place. went to Galway. The weather is wonderful. Like, it's my favorite weather. You're topping out yeah. at 70 degrees. Maybe it's going to rain a little bit. Like, that's that's my weather. Yeah. it's As yeah. you can see, it's, it's nice. Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a few things going on in the fall. Yeah. All things open offline, is what we're looking at. I don't know. Yeah, we went to React Miami because you have to to troll everyone using React. I was so I've never been more yeah. jealous of people who I've never met in my life having like so much. It looked like it was yeah. so much fun. I remember like seeing this stuff on Twitter and like talking to my wife and being like, "I know this is ridiculous, but like I wish I was there <laughs> to meet all these people I don't know." You know what's great about it because I felt like it was the blend of. A single track conference Mm -hmm. like okay you kind of like know what you're going to go through there and then it had like a very social element because you're like in miami and you have that miami vibe and then like kind of the whole like we're also just going to socialize together a bunch kind of like render is and it's much like that but then like renders like thousands of people so it's like whoa everything everywhere it's like so it was like a nice not as overwhelming oh so react miami was like a smaller conference I mean, it's probably yeah. It's smaller than it like appeared. A, a, I mean, a it is thousand single tops. I didn't count, but awesome. like yeah, renders but like five thousand. It's like insane. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's smaller in contrast. Like render is like a small reinvent. You know. Oh, I see. Like yeah, that, it's more right? broad. Like yeah, there is broad. There's a lot of different tracks. There's a lot of different vendors there. There's all kinds of entertainment. Yeah. There's like its own special branded swag and after parties that are like big artists and all oh, kinds man, of stuff cool. going on there. So it's like. Yeah, it is cool. So no doubt about that. But uh, React Miami was kind of like single track thing. And it's also like part of another really big conference that is like more like sea level tech adjacent oh, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Pitbull was a speaker. Yeah. Pitbull was one of the uh, oh, like main oh speakers oh, at that yeah. other conference. Yeah. Mr. Worldwide. <laughs> and, uh, so in, <laughs> yeah. Mr. Worldwide going to tell you what's up. So React Miami was like like that but then more intimate in some yeah. ways. It's sort of like you're seeing people multiple times and like without having to make plans with them and stuff like that. You know, we were walking down the street to like go to an after party thing and then some people are at a restaurant and they're like, hey. Oh, come hell here. yeah. That's awesome. You know, that that's of, so cool. Yeah. And you're like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, that's I'm going to go over yeah, there. And that's talk the vibe to you guys I got more. from all the pictures and stuff. Damn. Now I'm even more jealous. It Thank was you. definitely that. Yeah. <laughs> come next time. Yeah. I'm actually super <laughs> nervous. We we'll got invited yeah. to go to Rails World. Which is crazy. And okay. We're giving a workshop at Rails World, which is like, I don't okay. know what I'm doing. <laughs> where, where is that? It's in Toronto. Where and when? Plug yourself. Yeah, September okay. 26th and 27th. Do they need a whiskey themed podcast? There? I mean, I don't see why they wouldn't. We were talking okay. about Rails and Lambos. I mean, I am very Rails curious, yeah. I got to say. That's a whole. That's probably I would sling a whole other conversation. There are awesome. many things I would not sling. Uh, React included. Rails is still. But the best. I would sling Rails. 
Well, what is old is new again is very appealing to me. I'm not discounting like, oh, well, everything you're coming up with now is stupid. I don't think that. But I also think like, well, you might be getting like 10 steps ahead of yourself in a lot mm -hmm. of ways. And then like the whole ideology that I need like 15 SaaS subscriptions in order to launch an app versus like, oh, something like Rails, Django, like Redwood. Like there's a lot of these full stack web application yep. frameworks that like give you everything you need yeah. to start. Like if React right? is going to be compiled and server side, what the fuck are we doing? Just let me use whatever I want. <laughs> yeah, what the right. fuck are we doing? Yeah. yeah. What are we doing? Yeah, so I think that like that's what I appreciate about DHH is like in much the same way I think HTMX is interesting and all these other things. Like there are these web yeah. technologies. This is the platform that you're building upon and let's make sure that we're utilizing the tools of the platform to its maximum capability and not always like leveraging these like multiple levels of exactly. abstraction. Yeah. And so that is what I like about what like Rails has been and then like what he's been talking about with Rails 8 a whole bunch too. So we went back to tech. Yeah. See, I don't know. We might well, have to do a part we're two. We're over time, so we should probably do a part yeah, two of this. But in the last couple seconds here, is there anything you really wanted to talk about that we missed or anything you want to plug? No, nothing nothing crazy. Just typecraft underscore dev on YouTube and Twitter and Probably other places I'm not thinking of, but yeah, no, it was fun. It was nice hanging out. MySpace. MySpace. Um, What's I'm your OnlyFans? On MySpace. <laughs> OnlyFans. I'm um, on OnlyFans. I'm Amaranth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. nice. On, uh, well, thank you for coming on this episode and making sure that DHH will be the second listener <laughs> since we lost you for this one. Yeah. You might listen to your yeah. own. It's hard to say, but. We might get at least a oh, second. Thanks for having me on. This was fun. I definitely want to do more. This was, uh, this was a good time. For sure. We want to do more like streaming based stuff. we we'll, like just hang out happy hours. Yeah. Definitely do that. Oh, yeah. Sounds good. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thanks everyone for listening. If you liked it, please subscribe. Leave us some ratings and reviews. We appreciate it. And we will catch you next time. Smash that button. You know, no buttons? Mm -mm. Oh, controversial. <laughs> You've been watching Whiskey Web and Whatnot, recorded in front of a live studio audience. What the fuck are you talking about, Chuck? Enjoyed the show? Subscribe. You know people don't pay attention to these, right? Head to whiskey.fun for merch and to join our Discord server. I'm serious. It's like 2% of people who actually click these links. And don't forget to leave us a five-star review and tell your friends about the show. <sighs> All right, dude, I'm out of here. Still got it. <laughs>